Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. How are you? Marissa Myers here. <clears throat> I wanted to share with you a quick um, statistic or study information that I heard this morning listening to my personal development that could be super applicable to anyone who is a parent already or is thinking about becoming a parent, is in the process of becoming a parent, or is considering doing it in the future because I thought this was pretty freaking incredible and phenomenal. Um, growing up, my father worked uh, worked a lot and he wasn't home a lot. And he was trying to provide for a family of three kids and my mom um, wasn't working when I, was, when I was super young. Hey Jennifer. But she ended up going back to work shortly, you know, when I was a kid too. So I had both parents working and I mean, I, once I was in school. Um, but the statistics said today, well, well, and it, it, as, as that applies to me, my father worked a lot, but I actually like loved being with my father because he was barely ever home. And my mom was always home with us, so she was kind of like boring to us. We were like, eh, we see you all day, right? And then he kind of got like the excitement and he'd come home from work and we'd be like, yeah, daddy's home, daddy's home. We'd run outside and meet him. And my mom never got any of that, unfortunately, because she was the one that was really taking care of us all the time. And my dad was, well, financially he was taking care of us, but he wasn't emotionally available and home with us. So so um, he would come home from work and we would always want to like wrestle with him when we were little kids because it, that's what we, we enjoyed or whatever. So we'd like jump on him and you know be wrestling or whatever. And he a lot of times would come home and be so grouchy in such a bad mood and we'd be running out, daddy's home, daddy's home, like we'd want to play with him and he would just like want to sit there and either not be with us or sit at the kitchen table smoking his cigarettes or going out to the garage and doing more work so that he didn't have to be around us. No judgment on my father. Um, he actually passed away, uh, well, he committed suicide back in 2004. So, um, you know, he obviously had some mental illness going on as it, as it was, but he covered it up by being a super funny guy, you know, being like humorous and always making jokes and being super um, charming with people and a, and a schmoozer and talking a lot. So anyway, I applied this to my life because Basically, I was listening to my personal development this morning and it was talking about, it's called Leaders Eat Last by Simon Sinek. And it's talking about leadership and what makes people enjoy their jobs and how you can be a better leader. And I'm not in a profession where I'm like the CEO of anyone. I'm the CEO of my own business and then I help people become the CEOs of their own business. So they're leading their people. I mentor them. I give them you know, the information that I use to build my business and what helps me be successful. But ultimately the decision is on them if they want to use that mentorship like the content that I provide and move to to build their business the same way or if they want to make it their own and I'm not in charge of anyone I'm only in charge of my business and myself and then I'm helping people create a business that they're in charge of their self um, so kind of like a franchise a health and wellness franchise so anyway I um, I'm not in charge of anyone but I'm leading what by example so I'm leading my life first and then I'm helping people lead their lives so I'm trying to listen to more books on leadership because the skills that I have as far as leadership goes were not that many when I when I joined hey Katie so um, I'm listening to this book leaders eat last by Simon Sinek and I think he's brilliant he's an, he's an awesome um, awesome author and public speaker and he actually has a Facebook page if you want to follow him but it's talking about statistically that one in three people that work in like a, you know, a basic position, like entry level position are unhappy at their job. So 30, 33% of people are unhappy at their job. But, and then 4% of those people are going to have more um, mental illness, depression, and um, you know, physical ailments than people that are on high high-end leadership roles and it's not because of the job itself it's because they don't feel like they're in control of their life or they're in control of what they do at work because they're being told what to do and they really have no control over it where the people in the high-level positions like CEOs and top executives they feel that they have more control over their life and what they're doing at work so one in three people are not happy at their jobs in those basic positions and four percent of them will have more physical and mental illness than the people at the high level positions. But only 1.5% of people will actually leave those jobs that they hate to go find another job that they're passionate about that inspires them that they love. 
And the statistic that applies to children, well, it wasn't a statistic, but what it was that what they found when they studied, children are more negatively impacted by a parent's mood when they come home from work, so how they're treating their child versus what time they come home from work or what hours they're working. So I know a lot of people will choose a job, say for example, they don't want to work the night shift because it's not um, because it's not allowing them to be with their family or, or maybe they don't want to work the day shift, they want to work the night shift because the day shift takes them away from their family. Night shift, they go to work and they, you know, they work at night, like say a nurse, for example. I used to work night shift. So you work from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. and you get to spend time with your kids during the day and in the evening. So maybe you choose to do that. You choose to do the night shift because then you're gonna be around your kids more during the day. But then you're in such a cranky mood because you're working night shift because you're not sleeping and you're having all these responsibilities and your internal clock is all off and your eating schedule is off and you're, so you're in a bad mood every day. That's gonna more negatively impact your children than if you were to take a position where you work from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and then you only saw them for a few hours in the evening before they went to bed. It's actually gonna have worse impact hating your job and coming home in a bad mood than you know being away and then being in a good mood when you're actually with your kids. So my point about it is that it's really important to love what you do or if you, I mean, you can't really fake that. <laughs> you can't really go to work and hate your job for 12 hours or, or eight hours or whatever it is and then come home and put a smile on your face and be like, hey, I'm in a great mood even though I just had the crappiest day at work and I can't stand my job. So I thought that was really interesting because I would have thought that children would be more negatively impacted by their parents being away for long hours and as long as their parents are home with them, no matter what kind of mood they're in, it seems like they'd be happier to have their parents home with them, right? Well, that's not the case. The case is that they're, they are more negatively impacted from their parents' mood when they come home from work than they are um, from their parents being away for long hours. So if that isn't like <clears throat> a testament to finding a job that you love, and they say find a job you love and you never work another day in your life, find a job that you love and you're passionate about and if you're not in one right now then try to find a way to make your job right now something that you love and you're passionate about and what it suggests in the book for you to do that to enjoy what you're doing more is to help the people around you so whether say you're 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 working in an office and you're in a cubicle and you have people next to you then maybe you add value to their lives in some way um, and that would help you to feel more impactful at your job and more passionate about your job if that isn't the scenario, which for me, for example, I be, being in the nursing industry and being in the medical profession and being a nurse and then a nurse anesthetist for 10 years, I just knew that it wasn't what I loved. And I don't know, I don't know if there's any way for me to change my situation within that job because no matter what I do, I'm going to be going into the operating room, putting people to sleep. Hey, Lucy. And I'm going to be away from my home and my, my kids, my pet kids all day and no matter what I would have done, I still wouldn't be able to make that job fulfilling for me. So for me, the best option was to get control over my life and my work by leaving that job and actually starting a business. And you know, obviously it wasn't, I didn't leave the job and then start the business. I started the business, I did it on the side while I was still working full time and the hours that I had, I built it up slowly to the point where it replaced my salary as a nurse anesthetist and then I was able to leave my nurse anesthetist job. So I didn't replace one, like go away from anesthesia right away with the other. I slowly built my business up while I was still working full time. So there was no fear really in the way that I built my business because it wasn't like I was just dropping one thing and then hoping and praying and crossing my fingers and hoping this other thing would work out. This other thing, I already made it work out. I succeeded at it and then I left that full-time position and now I'm working one day a week as a nurse anesthetist so I know a lot of people reach out to me and they're like I could never do what you do because it's so time-consuming and you know what it's a lot less time-consuming than being in, in the operating room for 40 hours I don't work a full 40 hours a week at this point point. and did I in the beginning I had to work really hard to get to where I am but now that I'm at where I'm at I'm able to you know enjoy my life more and be able to do and have more flexibility over my time and freedom and control over my life and my my time and my job so that I guess is why I'm living a more fulfilling and less stressful life now because I'm not being controlled by my job and by the hours that I have to put in and my boss, I'm my own boss. So for me, that was the best solution. And 
easing into it, like building it up while I was still working full time was the best solution for me not to have that fear of jumping out of something and into something else that I wasn't sure was going to work out. So anyway, if you want some more information on what I do, if that sounds like something you'd love to do, be an entrepreneur and have your own business and be your own boss and have control over your job and your time, feel free to reach out, send me a message or comment on this post because every other week we host a behind the scenes behind the scenes look into what we do and we kind of just share our stories and talk about how we um, help coaches build their businesses. So thanks for tuning in and I hope you have an awesome day. See you guys.